game losing streak on the road. You've talked about you know, defensive inefficiencies there at the, at the start of games. How do you and your staff try to address that with the guys with respect to you know, their energy and the focus at the start? Yeah, I mean, you talk about it, and they've got to come with a better time. Now, Brooklyn will be a big test because it's one of the teams that drives the ball the most. That's what's given us the most problems. More problem than anything else is the teams that um, put it on the floor and attack the basket. Uh, we've had a lot of problems with that, and uh, we're going to have to do a lot better job with that tonight. Do you see parallels with, with that pace? I know that they're one of the faster paces of play, and with the uh, fast break points that New Orleans put on you? Well, I hope not. I hope <laughs> we don't see it. But, yeah, I mean, they, they try to get up and down the floor. They play at a good pace. Um, you know, we're going to have to get back, get our defense set, and, and work hard to keep the ball out of the paint. At any chance we see Stanley Johnson get some minutes tonight? I think so. Right. Yeah. Best of luck to you. Okay. All right, mm -hmm. Start or swing, sir? Uh, same as the other. Is Stanley going to rate that game rotation on this over there? He'll probably play. You know, it all depends on game situation, but I would think he'll be in there. Yesterday, one thing I just want to clarify, uh, Keith asked you a question about him. Um, the G League, G League coach showcase and the 10 day contracts, and he asked you, and you said, we are looking for possibly the people to help help these guys out. Yes. So kind of like a reference to the G League 10 day contracts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Brendan, all that, all Brendan's up there at the showcase now, um, you know, and uh, we've considered some guys. We've obviously got an open spot, and um, it's just. Uh, you know, right now we haven't pulled the trigger on anything, but it's something we're looking at, and uh, we're actually going to sit down and meet tomorrow morning uh, as a group, and and uh, you know we'll see if there's anything that we want to do at this point. Stan, what have you seen from uh, Dwight Pikes in these past four games with uh, the opportunity that he's been given so far? Yeah, I think he's played well. Um, he's he's you know attacked. He's played aggressively. Um, he can score the ball. Um, you know, we're looking for a little bit of defensive improvement, but uh, I think for a guy, you know, especially in the situation Dwight's been in, um, you know, he's been hurt most of the year. So we didn't even really have him in training camp. We had him for the first four days, and then he went down. He didn't play in an exhibition game with us as you would, you know, normally would with guys. He went to the D League. He only played 10 games because of injury. So he hasn't even been back off injury that long. And then we bring him up, and he's playing. Um, so I think. Especially based on the circumstances, uh, he's played very, very well. Is the mentality you want to give him a pretty good look here over the next stretch of games? Well, we're just again. I mean, I'm not thinking about anything about other than trying to play the guys that on any given night that give us the best chance to win. That's my only. Uh, that's my only thought. Hey, Stan, how has Tobias's game sort of changed with the the way the NBA is changing here in terms of the way he's been able to adapt? Well, he, he's just shot the three more and better. That's been the big thing. Um, you know, he, he shot it okay um, up until this year, and he would shoot it once in a while. Now, if he has room, he's shooting it all the time and uh, and shooting it well, and that's made him tougher to guard. you got to get out on the perimeter and play him. So um, Tobias is a guy that's always trying to find a way to get better, and uh, he put a lot of time in on that this summer. How much confidence does, do you have in that shot when he's taking it? Oh, yeah, tremendous confidence, yeah. I've got tremendous confidence in Tobias, period, but... Yeah, in that shot, yes. The other night in New Orleans, Avery said that you talked to him, I think, at halftime about <coughs> changing the approach maybe to his offensive game. And I think he came out in the second half, and two or three of his first few, few possessions were to the rim. Is that something that maybe been brewing for a little bit and you've been waiting for him to, to, yeah. to take that over? Yeah, you know, we just – I thought he had – you know, every game's different. That's the thing. You guys have to – you have to read defense and, and see what's there. But, but we thought there were opportunities there in that game for him to turn the corner and attack the basket. You know, that may be something different tonight. So um, you just got to read opportunities. Stan, what do you think has been the biggest stumbling block defensively for your team? You talked about it a little bit before. Is it effort? Is it, do you see it? Uh, I think our effort's usually pretty good. I, I just, um, we have trouble playing the ball off the dribble. And, uh, you know, we've got to be really good with our team defense to compensate. I mean, we've got to do a good job, you know, shrinking the floor and getting into gaps and things like that. And. You know, it's, it's just different types of attacks that give us problems. We've been a pretty good defensive team most of the year. We've had some outstanding defensive efforts mm -hmm. against very good teams. Um, so it's not like we're a team that night in and night out struggles, but we've hit this stretch on the road. I don't think we've, we've had a good defensive disposition at the beginning of games. 
And a lot of times, particularly when teams are playing at home, if they get it rolling early, it becomes tough to stop them even, uh, even as you turn up your uh, – you know, your effort and your focus a little bit. Is that the domino that guys help and then they come off their man and they have to race back and close out? Well, yeah, but then far. everybody else should be should be in. I mean, it, it's it's not easy in today's game. And, I mean, I, the Nets are a perfect example. You know, they're, I think, third in the league in drives, 50 a game, and they're third in the league in three-point attempts. So, you know, I mean, that's what you have to do. You have to cover a lot of ground um, as a team. That's today's NBA game. That's what defenses are about in the NBA. Um, and we're a little bit different, quite honestly. What most people have done, uh, a lot of the better defensive teams to compensate is, is switch a lot, but we obviously don't have great overall size, mm -hmm. so it's not as easy for us to be switching things. I mean, we're not six 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 seven at all of our perimeter positions, and um, so it's a little bit more difficult for us to do that. So we've got to be really, really good. Um, in our team defense. How has Tobias kind of blended into your leadership group here over the past couple of you know, two and a half seasons you had him? Well, Tobias is a guy who's always going to set a set a great example for everybody else. Really professional guy, and then he's not a he's not a real vocal guy. But you know, when you're around a guy like that over time, he earns the respect of teammates. And when he has something to say, people are going to listen. Um, because they know what kind of person he is. Tough to do for a 25-year-old, wherever he is it? Well, there's not, we don't have that many guys much older than him. So. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I mean, if he was on a team with everybody else was over 30, you know, that would, that would be one thing. But we've only got one guy over 30, so it's not like there's a lot of uh, older people that he's got to deal with. Stan, uh, talk, talk about professional guys, Avery Bradley, to that end. I know he's been hurt, he just came back, but yeah. what has he meant to your team this season? Well, he's given us, I think he's added to our defensive disposition. He can really guard the ball. He's pretty consistent in his, uh, in his defensive focus every night. And, um, you know, and he can score the ball. I mean, coming off handoffs, pick and rolls and things, he can raise up and shoot it. Um, he's capable of getting to the rim a little bit more, and he's shot the three well. So, um, you know, he's played well. I apologize. I know you were asked this the other day in practice, but when you when you watch Spencer and the way he's developed, um, has he exceeded what you could have possibly expected when you had him? And, and nobody can ever exceed what their potential is, right? So um, you you don't know. I mean, you just don't know. I mean, um, Spencer has, has a lot of ability. The one thing we did know early on is great size. Well, two things, I guess: great size for a point guard and can really, really see the floor. I mean, you know, and you watch him now, he can make every pass and, and does. He's become a lot more aggressive, whether that was, you know, he's more comfortable now. He's removed from that ACL injury and everything else. Um, he's become a lot more comfortable attacking the basket and he's shooting the three better. You add those two things to a guy who can really pass at his size at point. You got a good player. He's having a great year.